What? Huh? What? What? It, it, is this is this real? What is real? What timeline am I living in? This is breaking news. Metroid Dread has become the best-selling game in the entire Metroid franchise. Since its launch in October of last year, it has sold almost 3 million units as of now. <laughs> 3 million? Wait, but I thought that's a low number. Yeah, for a big first-party game like Mario or Zelda, yeah it is. But by any other standards, those are fantastic sales numbers. I've always been a fan of the series. I've always wanted to see it break further into mainstream gaming culture. But in order for it to do so, and make me happy, it had to do it right. The reason why this makes me feel so good, is that the game to break sales records is a game that is designed like a Metroid game with no compromises made. They could have more easily achieved these kinds of sales off of a game that rebooted and reinvented the series to try to appeal to a wider audience, but this is not what they did. They made a Metroid game that is designed like a Metroid game. Well, I think I know why this happened, and the reason is that this game didn't need to appeal to a wider audience. The wider audience was already there. Following the release of Metroid Other M on the Wii, the series saw an extended hiatus. The next generation of Nintendo systems, the 3DS and the Wii U, lacked any Metroid to speak of for the longest time. That absence is what brought the hardcore fans out of the shadows. Both from video game fans and the gaming press, Metroid was something that became a talking point constantly. When Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze was announced for the Wii U at E3 of 2013, despite it looking like an amazing game, it became overshadowed by the frustration of many that the game's developer, Retro Studios, would rather be making another Donkey Kong game than another 3D Metroid game. See, there's the thing about the Metroid fanbase. They may be smaller in numbers than Mario or Zelda fans, but they are loud. Many independent, better known as indie developers, have been largely influenced by the Metroid series. As early as Cave Story in 2004, indie games were being influenced by Metroid. While the actual Metroid series died down, these indie games never did. Remember how I mentioned the Wii U era? Despite the lack of official Metroid to play at the time, there were a lot of Metroid games to play. There was Ori and the Blind Forest, Axiom Verge, Guacamelee, and Hollow Knight, just to name four of them. What used to be a niche in gaming was now the mainstream. There was outcry when Nintendo took down the fan remake of Metroid 2 because of how much demand there now was for a new official Metroid game. Then there was excitement when at E3 2017, they not only revealed Metroid Prime 4 was being made, but an official remake of Metroid 2 on the 3DS. Samus Returns on the 3DS was well received, but the common sentiment was that while the game was well made, it played things way too safe in many areas. For Metroid to really rattle the gaming world, it would need to do something bold and new. Well, with Metroid Prime 4 still being nowhere to be seen, in 2021, it was a huge but welcome surprise when the trailer dropped for a side-scrolling sequel to Fusion on the Switch. This was the perfect time as at this point the sequel to Ori was out, and still new enough, and fans were getting impatient for Hollow Knight's Silk Song. 2D Metroid was big, so this was the perfect time for a new 2D Metroid to come out. Dread did its job perfectly. The game was fantastic, it looked and played great. And the story, that story, oh man. If you've played Dread all the way through, then you know what I'm talking about when I talk about how great the game's plot and payoff at the end was. Well, that covers the non-game aspect of why the game sold, but I also think the reason why the game gained the reputation it did so quickly is because of how it included a lot of elements from the previous 2D games, but presented itself and played like a modern, current-gen game. If there's the opposite of tone deaf, this game was it. Well, now that Dread's no longer new anymore, what now? Well, fortunately, the genre isn't dead. While you wait for Nintendo to publish the next Metroid game, there's still loads of other games to check out from independent studios that feel and play like Metroid. Next time, I will be covering one of those games for a reason that will be made clear then. In the meantime, see you next mission.